again, part two. <laughs> so for some reason it cut me off. Somebody was signing into Kevin's Gmail, so it sends you a notification and it just cut off the recording. Sorry. Anyway. So we've seen Kinky Boots. And then what's the one that you were the other one that you went to a school? Um, there were multiple that we went to a school. Mm -hmm. We went to go and see Kinky Boots. We went to the opera. We went to the ballet. We saw the Nutcracker. I love the Nutcracker. Yeah. And then the opera that we saw, I don't remember what it was. I think it was... I want to say, like, it was like their own opera. Because they're an opera group, right? <coughs> I don't remember what it was. Francis is filling. <laughs> I think we saw some other stuff, too, but I don't remember. We went and saw Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Mm. Have you ever been to Young People's Theater? No. Uh, Wait, should go. maybe. Yeah. So, Young People's Theater. Oh, we've also been to, um, uh, what is it? Um, City, um, <clears throat> they do stand up comedy. Oh, um, Second City. Yeah, that's it. Second City is awesome. It's an improv place. Yeah. We also have Yuck Yucks here. <clears throat> and, um... <laughs> Toronto is the birthplace of very many comedians, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like John Candy. <clears throat> Russell Lee. But he's not from Toronto. He's from Brampton, but still. But he went to Neil McNeil. Just up the street. He literally, like, I guess he came here as a teenager. Yeah. And so did Gowan. Lawrence Gowan. I don't think he goes by Gowan anymore. Or Larry Gowan. <coughs> um, what else have I seen? I've been to so many different things. Axel's first concert? Whoa. Was Avril Lavigne when he was five years old. So, he went, and it was so loud. <clears throat> he had good seats, but, like... the Okay, literally what I remember about I'm that concert, father I don't even remember sitting in any seats. There were no seats. We were sitting in, like, the back. Mm -hmm. Like, all the people were in front of us. Or, like, we were anymore. in the middle. Mm -hmm. And there was, like, nobody. And we were sitting there with this lady and her son. And we were, like, eating pizza by, like, a giant pillar. That's what I remember. Alright. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Anyway. It was too loud for him. And it was getting late, because he was five years old. Yeah. So... I'm, you know, probably don't remember if she had an opening act, do you? No. No. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that they did. Most likely. And he was getting tired and wanted to leave. So they went to go, and the security guard came up to them and asked them if there was something wrong. And he said, why are you leaving? Yeah, his dad was like, well, it's kind of loud for him. And he's getting tired. And he's like, oh, well, you, well then just uh, come over here. And he brought them up to, like, the catwalk right at the front. So Axel had, like, <clears throat> front row to Avril Lavigne. He came home, and he was so tired, but he wanted to tell me all about it. It like was where, so cute. The catwalk where you could see, they had, like, plexiglass, so you could see through the catwalk underneath. Yeah. So cool. <clears throat> My first concert when I was a kid was, like, this country bumpkin, um, I don't know, <clears throat> something. Square dancing. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, it was, like... Kenny Rogers, Willie Nelson, Dolly Parton, um, Randy Travis, 
Um, I just a lot of people, and it was at Ontario Place. I was probably I don't know four or five years old. We went to all of these concerts there when I was a kid because my dad used to work at Inglis. I think I've told you that whole yes, story. Yes, yes. And you could get tickets because the staff <clears throat> at Inglis helped the um, CNE, which is the Canadian National Exhibition. They would help them set up all of the stuff that they didn't need major technicians for, like the rides and stuff, but they would help them set up all the games and, like, you know, the teddy bears and, and the cotton candy stands all and all that kind of stuff. All the games. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the duck game and, you know, ring toss. And, uh -huh. and my brother Adrian used to work the parking lot. That was fun. Oh my gosh. The stories he could tell of the people at the CME parking lot. Oh, Lord. Anyway, so we used to get tickets all the time for these free concerts. Well, not oh, technically you didn't get tickets for the concerts. What you got was you got admission into the CNE. And then if you were in the CNE, you could walk over this bridge that I thought I was going to die over to the Ontario place. And then the Cinesphere is in the Ontario place. And that's where the concerts were. So, um... I saw Rock was in probably like my I don't even know how many times with my mom there. Um, that's where we saw Jeff Healy probably maybe about ten times there with um, Amanda Marshall as his opening act at one point. Um, later on in years, that's where I saw <coughs> why can't I think of his name right now? Darius Rucker. He used to be the lead singer for Hootie and the Blowfish. Um, I remember I wanted to go to a concert, but you wouldn't let me. Which one? I wanted to go see Avenged Sevenfold. What their opening act was Corn. Uh, yeah, but how old were you? Fifteen. Fifteen. You want to go to the CNE? Well, whatever the heck it is. Molson Amphitheater. Molson Amphitheater by himself. No, or meet somebody I did down not there. say by myself. It's such a different world now, friends. Like honestly. I was working downtown at the age of 12 and going back and forth from school to like major downtown area. I would get off at Young Station and walk over. Well, I'd get off sometimes at Bloor and or um, Bay and like walk over to work and I'd be working after school and I'd come home 9, 930, not even think anything of it. Like nothing could happen at that point in life. You you didn't even you could have walked home from work at that point in life. You'd never have to worry about anything at two three in the morning, which I used to do. Cause Karen, who lives like five minutes from us, I used to walk home from her house two three in the morning. What she would do is walk me halfway, and then we'd both walk back to our houses, and then we just call each other when we got home to make sure that we were safe. Nowadays, you can't do that. She has That's to walk so Axel to the door. It's so funny. Every time that I go, she's always like, okay, I'll walk you halfway. <laughs> and then we get halfway and she forgets. And then we get all the way to the house and she stands across the street and waits for me to walk across the street and come in. Yeah. And she's like, oh yeah, I was supposed to walk you halfway. I'm like, I know. But every time she just walks me straight to the, across the street. Yeah. Honestly, like our neighborhood is really, really safe. We know everybody here, but it's, it's just that, you know, it's just not the same everywhere. It's really unfortunate because I never ever felt unsafe in my own city in my whole entire life like I have in the past couple of years. And it really sucks because, you know, you can't live in fear, but then you can't live so that you're not safe either, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. So you just have to, you know, do what you got to do to make sure that you get home safe. So if you're past, I don't know, 11 o'clock babysitting or working, whatever, then take a cab home and ask somebody to meet you out front and... You know, walk in pairs. Don't ever be alone. Or if you're in Toronto, you can ask if it's after 9 o'clock. You can ask the bus driver to stop Right in anywhere. front of your house. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is really cool. Um, they've had it out for quite a few years now. Um, More than a few years. Yeah. where you... It's been out for a long time. And literally the bus stops right in front of our apartment. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, so we can ask him to drop us off right at the door. And usually if Axel's out late or whatever, he'll tell one of us and we'll go out with the dog and meet him. Yeah, exactly. He's and, I don't know. And, you know, like, we're really <clears throat> blessed because we really do know everybody here. So, God forbid that 
you know, we ever felt unsafe, we would just have to, like, knock on somebody's door, mm -hmm. and we'd be fine. But, you know, we've also felt the same way, like, as far as people coming here, you know, we're a pretty safe house, and <laughs> we have a dog, but he can't bite. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> our guard dog has turned into our, I don't know, num num dog. dog. What? He's a lap dog. <laughs> Yes, you are. You snuggle bug. Yes. So we went and did our shopping. We did our grocery shopping. We made a list. And then what happened? We forgot to take a picture of the list. We forgot to take a picture it's of okay, the list. It's okay, because we only forgot four things off the list. Yeah, so I'll just get it tomorrow. I'm but we got with... things that were not on the list. Just a few. Like yogurt. Yeah. <clears throat> we don't. We don't really stick to a list. We're really trying to um, not spend a lot of money because we lost our client on Thursday because she, unfortunately, her work was contract work. Yeah. And the contract didn't work out. <coughs> no! He's waiting. I know. So. Can't you just, like. We still have things? our Thursday client. Uh, sorry, <coughs> our Tuesday client. And I'm, I'm currently looking for more. So hopefully that'll work out. The doggy. Okay, sit. No, get out of the food. Sit. No, you can't. If you're gonna snoof, hey, if you're gonna snoof, snoof. Yes, if you're gonna snoof, then you gotta get down. Anyway, so we're trying to be really mindful of our money so that you know we don't waste too much. No thanks. <laughs> don't be doing that on camera. <laughs> you baby. Um, so yeah, so we are really hoping to do some shopping trips with you where it's like vegan on a budget, vegan gluten free on a budget. Cause as you know, we're both vegan gluten free. Well, in this house, Axel's not vegan, just so everybody knows, <laughs> but he's like 99.8% vegan. Yeah. I only eat vegan when I'm outside the house. Yeah. And that's kind of rare even so, cause he'll usually come home and eat dinner. <laughs> I thought you were going to see, cause it's, I thought you were going to say it's rare that I go to the house. No. I'm like, wow, thanks. So tomorrow <laughs> we're making a tofu roast for the first time. I think we were supposed to marinate it from tonight. We should check the recipe. Good. So you can still do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have cloves, though. We have to go get cloves. Why do we need cloves? I don't know. You're supposed to stick it in. <laughs> it's Just like you're go making... and ask the neighbors for some cloves. We only need, like, nine. We can't ask Pat, though, because she's not doing well. We can ask uh, Craig. Yeah. Do you want to go ask Craig? Yeah, not right now. Oh. <laughs> he knows... Did I say Craig? He knows his name because of the Who's dog. Craig? Does he have Wilkins? Does Craig have a doggy named Wilkins, your little buddy? You're so... He's so scared of you. He shivers like a little rat, like you. Yes, he does. Yes. He's scared that little puppy. He's so cute. Oh my gosh, friends, we have the cutest dogs in our building. So, we're going to do a tofu roast, which we've never tried before. Hopefully, it'll turn out well. But yeah, you're supposed to marinate it from the night before. It's okay. The roast potatoes will be fine. If the uh, tofu doesn't work, roast potatoes. I know the roast potatoes will be okay. We could survive on roast potatoes, as you know. So, yeah, we don't even care if it's good. We'll still eat it. It's not a big deal. So I'll go to church in the morning, and then I'm going to meet Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer! At Old's Cool General Store. One of the coolest stores. Like, I think I told you, right? That maybe I'll be able to film, but I'm not sure. I'll be staying home with the dog. Yeah. And then I'm going to pick up <clears throat> the stuff that we forgot. Yeah, we forgot... Cloves. Cloves. Um, I'm trying to read... Baking soda... Baking soda is not a big deal. It's just to put in the new freezer. SOS pads. SOS pads. We still have some, but I don't and know. Because the dollar sale. I can't read the top one. I can't read the top one. Anyway. That's it, friends. So, two-parter tonight because I got cut off. Sorry. <laughs> we love you. <clears throat> don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when we put up a new video. Keep smiling. And stay blessed, friends. Good. <laughs>